Um, huh, yeah, um, all the videos for the help session should be up on the YouTube channel for the class. So uh, let me see if I got. Uh, Um, how much? I mean, of course, the ones that I had people quite had had some content on uh, will end up on the uh, uh, the 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 YouTube um, playlist. There should be a link to that on um, in our. Uh, um, my Leo online course content. So, but, but yeah, only the ones where we, I discussed anything significant or the people would ask some questions would be on there. So, um, uh, being slow here. Uh, let me just check here. Yeah, I probably don't have any from, uh, there wasn't, there wasn't a recording on Monday. Uh, yeah, last one might have been where we talked about the second program assignment, actually. Why well, is it being so slow? But yeah, if you can find that playlist, I always just add them down to the end. So you should have, have them down at the bottom. Um, so yeah, the last one was from probably two weeks ago from when we did assignment two, probably. So uh, yeah, anyway, um, um, since uh, we had some interest, uh, I think we'll go ahead and, and um, look at the assignment three here and maybe get started on it. Um, so as, as we've done in the past, I've, I've often worked on the first task or a little bit for the assignments here. So our third um, topic for this course is all about, um, about, uh, concurrent, um, uh, about concurrency in programming and concurrency in operating systems. So yeah, and, and so assignment three is about um, implementing the resource allocation denial um, algorithm, uh, also known as the banker's algorithm. So um, there's a couple of things. I mean, you know, I've, I've, I've got some videos this week um, on our uh, content about concurrency. Uh, the, the, there's kind of three levels of, of, of things for, um, ways that you might deal with deadlines. So this is all about in um, our, our chapter about uh, deadlocks, um, about how you deal with them. So, um, so yeah, I mean, you can either completely prevent them by removing one of those necessary or sufficient conditions. So, um, so that's one way you can deal with deadlocks, but that's often um, not a, uh, uh, an approach that you can take because in order to remove one of those necessary and sufficient conditions for deadlocks, you end up having to, um, it's an efficiency sort of argument. So, so at the other extreme, you can just allow deadlocks to occur and then you can maybe try and detect them after they occur and maybe um, just stop a pro stop any processes or restart them if they get into a deadlock state right so that that's that's the deadlock detection algorithm that's that's kind of the other and so so kind of what i'm leading up to is the one that we're actually working on for the third program assignment is it's kind of a middle um approach so this is not uh, this is a deadlock avoidance scheme um so it's not um, um completely preventing um or it's not one of those prevention methods, but it, it's, it's also not where we allow deadlocks to occur and then we just try and analyze the state of the system and um, uh, and try and determine if there's a deadlock or not. So, um, so, 
so yeah, in, in this one, um, I mean, basically, you know, you, we need to read the textbook. Uh, we're going to be implementing the, the ones from the, the pseudocode from this figure for the this um, so-called banker's algorithm, okay? So this, this has to do with um, taking a description of the, the current state of the system um, and then making this, this determination whether it is um, safe or not. Uh, and then, well, really, that, that's kind of the first step. So, so building this, this method that can analyze the state of the system and, uh, and return whether it's safe or not. Uh, and then the, the full resource allocation denial is that uh, what you really want to do is you want to take the current state of the system and take a new resource request, so a, a request to allocate um, an additional resource or some number of additional resources uh, and then make the determination, okay, if, if the state is currently safe, but we um, went ahead and, uh, you know, so, so uh, we need to check. So what would happen if, if we went ahead and allowed the, the request to be fulfilled, right? So, uh, so in that case, basically what we're doing is we're creating a new, um, proposed new system state based on the the resources that were requested and but but then we just want to make that determination so for the new state that might um, um, result from the resource request is that new state safe or not and if it's not safe then you want to deny that so you want to do the 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 denial of that resource allocation request okay so you know that's just kind of um, kind of an overview of, of, of what we're doing here so that, that stuff should make a lot more sense if, if we get into the details of um, of actually trying to implement uh, these so um, so let me see I gotta remind myself um, so let, let, let me start by kind of maybe talking about the the state here um, so but as usual um, you're given code to start with that will um, load in one of these uh, files that describes the state so you don't actually have to do any file IO um, but yeah we uh, your, your first task is that we have to start by implementing the needs are met member function here um, and so on. So let's, let's look what we got here. So for assignment three, actually, let me let me go ahead and um, reopen my folder just to make certain I'm in a clean state here. So as usual, we should always start by um, opening the top level folder for our projects. Um, so for our uh, OS 430 Sims um, project here at the top level. Um, and yes, yeah, let's, let's check, make certain that everything builds and runs. Um, So I'll do a clean here to, to clean everything. Control Shift C, and then rebuild. Control Shift B. So yeah, in this case, I mean, this project, this this assignment might be um, not as much work, I think, as, as assignment two. So there's there's only like two or three functions that we actually need to write um, in this uh, assignment. Um, and uh, yeah, I think all your work will end up being down into the state.cpp here. So. Um, So as usual, it takes a little while to get this to build. I put my I'll split the screen here. There we go. 
go. And let's bring up the unit tests here. So yeah, the very first test case in this assignment um, uh, actually is probably going to be passing for you. So it starts by pass by uh, doing some tests of of loading the system state function. So I guess yeah, well I'm, I'm still we're still waiting for this to do my first compilation, make sure everything compiles. Um, let's let's look at one of these system states here. So um, so yeah, at at the For example, the state one that sim here. If, if we look at it, um, so all these there should be sims and results in the the sim files. So um, all you have in this is um, it's really um, so the the load. The, the load from file basically ignore, ignores lines with the pound sign in front of them. So you can use those as comments and it ignores blank lines. So basically though, all, all it's expecting is that the first line tells us the, the total number of processes, uh, which is gonna be four here, and the total number of resources, uh, which is three in this system. Uh, and then among the three resources, we've got nine of, of resource, um, so you can call that resource one, two, and three, or actually we should probably call that resource zero, one, and two. So um, just because since we're writing this in code, un unlike for our textbook, um, it's easier to use zero-based indexing for the arrays and stuff that we do. So, so we kind of change to the first process as being process zero instead of process one, and the first resource as being resource zero instead of resource one. So, um, so anyway, yeah, finally built there. Let's, and then let's, let, me, let me just go ahead and run the tests. Um, so yeah, I mean, as usual, it should build, but, um, and, and in fact, uh, when you run the test, the first unit test uh, initially should be running, uh, should be passing for you, all, all of this for this very first test case. So the first failing one will be down here um, at line 93 which is we have to start by doing the needs are met function um, here. So, um, so anyway, um, just kind of to finish up on this that I just started. So the, 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 this is the same state that, that you saw from our, our text file. Um, so this completely specifies the current state of a system. So in terms of the resources that we have in the system, and we can call this resource zero, one, and two. There's nine of resource zero, three of resource one, and six of resource two. Um, and since we have four processes, um, we can completely specify the state of the system by giving the, the total claim, so the maximum that each process claims it will need of each resource. So, so process zero claims it needs at most three of resource zero, two of resource one, and one of, or two of resource um, two, and so on. And then these are the current allocations. So this is the allocation or the A matrix. So, um, so all of these should be less than, than the, the maximum claim. Uh, for any particular one of these, right? So, but anyway, so currently process zero, it claims it needs at most three, two, and two, and it currently only has one of resource zero. It doesn't have any of the resource one and two um, that it needs here. So, um, so yeah, you can kind of see that. So, it, so if I can go back to the first test case here, after we load in that, that state one sim, um, if you print it out, you'll see that that you should get exactly that same information back. You know that was the claim matrix, that was the allocation matrix. Um, now, so the the very first step that we're doing in the assignment is kind of determining the needs here. So you can you can figure out what the needs are because it's, it's basically the the claims minus the current allocation. So again, if if we claim we need at most three two two, process zero needs at most three two two of the resources and it currently has allocated only one zero zero that means that it currently that it needs two 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 it's just c minus a right 
Um, so it still needs two more of, of resource zero to get to reach its maximum or total that it claims it would need to do its work. Um, but this should all line up with, you know, the, this state one simulation that we read in here, if, if you kind of look through this here. And, um, all right, so let's, let's look at what we need to do for the needs are met then. So the, the first task here. So if I can go back to the assignment description. Um, so basically the signature of the needs are met is that it takes a process ID. Um, so again, um, you know, you should be using zero based indexing. So, you know, for this, this um, system state that we, that I first started talking about, there's there's four processes and their process index is gonna be zero, one, two, or three, right? So the needs are met, um, takes a process ID as its first parameter, it takes an array of integers that represents the current number of resources available of each type, right? Um, so, you know, you have to have some idea of what the available resources are. Um, um, here. So we can go back to the code uh, or back to the tests here. Um, so for example, we, we can we, we can we can see that we're passing in those two parameters. So um, it, it, again, if we load in like this particular state um, and we ask whether the needs are met for process zero, where we currently have zero, one, and one available. So notice that we're um, assuming that it should be saying that, and, and, and the, the needs are met is supposed to be returning back a Boolean result, so true or false, right? So is it, tr is it, is it true or not that process zero's needs can be met given that there's zero, one, and one um, available here, right? Um, if that happened to be what the, the number of currently available resources are, um, in the system here. So uh, we can answer this particular question for the needs are met because um, we, uh, I mean, to do that, we would have to, to know what the needs are um, and then we'd, we'd have to check that to what's currently available, okay? So if somehow, you know, given the current state of the system, if you can calculate this need matrix um, for process zero, then you can compare that to, you can, can compare that to what currently are available. So here, since we need, um, for, for, for the state zero, which is what we, we loaded for our first test here, the same state that we were looking at, so, so this just you know to, to answer the particular question that you need to be writing for this first function, uh, it's basically going to be true if all of the values in the needs matrix, however you calculate the needs matrix, um, are le less than or equal to what you're you're told is the currently available resources. Okay, so it, it's false that that process zero's needs are met if this is the available resources we have, because well, basically all, none of the, the needs can be met, but, but you know, just going from, from resource zero, um, it says there's, there's zero currently available of resource zero, um, and process zero needs two. So, so we can't uh, meet the need for resource zero. So that's, that's why, um, I mean, among, among all these, so actually we can't meet, meet the needs for any of the free resources, but, but, but the, the basic algorithm that you need to implement is, I mean, as soon as you find one, res one resource that can't be met, you should just return false. But if you check all of the resources and all of them can be met, then you would ultimately return a true here. So, so again, if we look through the rest of these, so notice that also we say that, that the needs sh should be false, that we can't meet the needs for process two and three as well, because again, we've got zero, one, and one. So if, if we look at the needs for process two, um, um, we can meet, I'm sorry, no, so, so um, 
so for both of these also, the, the needs uh, for, for resource zero are more than zero. So, so we can't meet the need for resource zero. So could, we can immediately see that, that we can't meet the needs for process two or three. But in this case, um, we can meet the needs for process one because again, it needs zero, zero, one, which we can tell um, looking from the claim and the allocation. So process one claimed that it needed 613, um, and it currently has allocated 612. That means that it only needs one more resource two to meet its needs. And, and that's what we've got um, in this first test here. Uh, we've got, uh, well, we, we've got zero, one, one. So we've actually got one of resource one, it uh, doesn't need any of those, but we've also got one of resource uh, two, uh, which is enough to meet um, the needs in this case, all right? Um, so, I mean, if you understand that, I mean, basically, if, if you go back and look at the algorithm, the reason why we're implementing, starting by implementing the needs are met function, uh, and then the find candidate process, and then the release allocate, release allocate resources. Um, is so that, so, so th these functions will allow you to pretty much directly implement like the is safe function and then also to uh, directly implement the full banker's algorithm. So, so if you have these, if, if you write these functions, uh, then you'll be able to use those to implement the is safe. Um, and so, and I'll come back and talk more about those here um, in a bit, so. Um, So yeah, I guess a couple things that you need to know. So uh, when we do this load state, um, uh, the, the function S, um, um, is, or sorry, the, the, uh, the, the, the object S, the class S is, is a member of this, you know, it's, a, it's a, one of these state types. Let me open up the header file as well. I'll talk a little bit about the state here. Uh, so if we implement the, the, the state of, of a system to do this um, banker's algorithm um, as a class, but basically, all of its member variables are just all of that same information. So when, when you load in the state, it basically keeps track of inside of the member variables for the process, you know, the number of resources in the system that we're trying to simulate and the number of processes. And then it loads in the, the, the claim matrix into a two dimensional matrix of integers. So, so it holds all these values of the maximum claims for the processes. Um, and it, and it uh, has another two dimensional matrix for all the allocations, has another two-dimensional matrix for the needs, but um, when, when you do a load, um, it actually um, infers the needs from the C minus A, the, 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 the claim minus the allocations for you. So you'll already have the needs calculated as well um, anytime you load the state um, from um, a file, right? So, I mean, we can see that, uh, I mean, you know, it'd be, it'd be useful for people to look at the, um, the, um, the load state from file function. So, you know, if you look in there, you know, it, it starts by opening the file. Um, and basically it just, it's, it reads in the number of processes and the number of resources into the member variables. So it's, it's expecting exactly this information in this order on these lines in order to successfully read in this file. Um, so, and then, you know, so this, this loop here is basically just um, loading in the, into this array called resources total, which is just one dimensional. So because we just got the total resources, 
for each of the number of, of resources that we have in the system, right? Um, and then we read, we expect to have the claims matrix. So we have a, a, a nested for loop to read in, in all these values into our claim matrix. Another nested for loop to read in these values into the allocation matrix. Um, oh, and then we, we call the infer state information, um, which if we look at that, basically also uh, fills in the need. So the need is simply the, the difference between each claim minus each resource allocation. That, that gives us the needs. Um, and there is also a, a resources available. So resources available is gonna be the total resources minus the, the currently allocated. So, so again, uh, you know, if I have nine allocated, or if I have nine total of resource zero, and I've got these allocated, so among my four processes, I've got one plus six plus two allocated of resource zero. So that means I've got eight total allocated. Um, which is what we're doing here, right? So, so we first go through and, and add up all the current allocation for each um, um, resource, right? And then we subtract the current allocation from the total to, to get the resource available, okay? But, so that brings us back to then um, the needs are met function, which is the first one. So um, notice, so in, instead of using um, the current available, this part of the state, you actually have to pass that in because um, uh, if, if you look at how the banker's algorithm is implemented, um, the way it works is you start by um, copying the, the, the total available to a temporary available call that, that, that we call W or something like that um, in our textbook. And then the algorithm for the banker's algorithm is that you try and find a process whose needs are met. And if you find the process whose needs are met, you simulate it running to completion and you return its allocated resources. So whenever you do that, you end up uh, changing the current available by simulating a process being run and returning its resources back to the system. So that's, that's why we needed a function where you could pass in the current available so that we could simulate finding a process whose needs are met, returning their resources back to the available resources, and keep doing that until we either get all of the, the processes we could find um, a, um, a sequence where all the processes can run to completion or we can't find such a sequence in, in which case the state isn't safe okay so um, So here, I mean, if you understand all that, basically, so, so by default, we're returning true, uh, but of course, you know, our needs aren't met. Um, so, so if I go back to this test again, um, so given that these are the current available, um, so for example, for, for process zero, um, um, the needs can't be met by these currently available resources if we pass that in. So, so we really need to search through um, our, our needs, the, the needs matrix, and compare that to, to each, each one to, to the current available that we're given as a parameter here for the particular process, right? And if we find one whose needs can't be met by, the, by what we're told is the currently available amount of resources, then we would want to return false, right? So, but, and, and if, if we check all the, the resources for the particular process and all their needs can be met, then, then we'd want to return true, right? So, so the kind of the, the last action or the default action um, makes sense here. Um, so we want to do that, but we only want to re return true if we, re if we prove. So if we look through all of the resources um, and, and see that um, all of them, um, their needs can be met. Um, by the currently available for the given process, all right? So, I encourage people to just use like uh, an index variable called like resource. So 
So we need to check all the resources. Um, and, and again, so this is a member function of our state class, okay? So, so we, we create a local variable called resource. Um, it's gonna start at zero because we need to check all the resources uh, for this particular process. We need to check the needs for this process against the, this current available, right? So current available is the number available for each resource. So in this case, uh, you know, again, um, if we're just looking at this particular system state, uh, there's three resources, right? Resource zero, one, and two. That's the number of resources. And that's gonna be the value of num resources, the, the, the member variable num resources, which uh, we're referring to here. So we want to check all the resources, zero, one, two, up to, you know, so in this case, we wanna check the resources, resource zero, resource one, and resource two, if we have a total of three resources, right? Um, and, and basically, we need to check whether the needs are less than or equal to the, the, what we're told is currently available, right? Or, um, or actually, to make the logic easier, we, we want to check if, if the need uh, if we ever find a need that can't be met by the currently available. So if we have a need um, that's greater than uh, what's currently available, then our answer is false. The needs um, are not met, right? Um, in that case, okay. So here and then I, I left this because, you know, so you have to know it's, if, if we're directly using these um, two-dimensional arrays, that are part of the state object, you just have to be careful, you know. So um, always the first index uh, indexes the, um, the process, okay? So the first index is the row if it's a two-dimensional. So for, for the claim, the first index zero would be the, for process zero, you know, for row zero, it's, it's all the, the, the claims for process zero. Um, and then, you know, index one would be for process one and so on. Same for allocation and the same for the need. So for the need matrix, um, it's two dimensional as well. But if I only want to find the needs for process zero, I just need to specify the first index because the, 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 the first index um, gives me which particular process, which particular row we're working with here, right? But we're given that as the first parameter here. So, so you know, again, this function is only checking whether the needs are met for one particular process, and, and you're told which which process to check um, as part of calling your function. Um, and then the second index for all these two-dimensional arrays in our state here. Um, is the, the resource ID or the, the index into the resource, so basically the column um, for these two-dimensional um, matrices, right? So again, you know, this would be another reason why it might be useful to look at, for example, the load or the infer inf information or the load um, load state function, you know. So I do similar things um, in those, although, for example, when we're loading in the um, allocations, we have a two-dimensional array, but, but, uh, but again, you know, so we're, we're accessing the allocation and the first index is the process, you know, is the row number or the, or the process, and then the second in index is the column or the resource index, basically. Um, all right, so I think then that's, that should basically, let's try it out. So that basically should do it for our needs are met. So, so, you know, again, to step back from this, we're just checking. So for the given process, we try and find one instance where the needs can't be met. And if we find such, um, um, an example, where, where the needs are greater than what's currently available, then the answer has to be false. So the needs are not met by the currently available. If we get all the way through this though, uh, that, that will mean that we checked every resource and we found that all of the resources 
um, that were needed could be met by what we're, we're told is currently available. In that case, we should then just return true if, if we get past the loop here. So, so let's build that and test it. So, I mean, indeed, so notice we're getting all the way down to line 152. So, um, because basically, once you implement the needs are met, um, if you get it correct, that'll, that'll actually pass all the tests for the second test case and get you all the way down to the next one um, for the fine candidate process um, down here. So, but yeah, before we meet, move, move on to that, I mean, you know, it might be worth understanding um, so notice we, we test the function a couple of different times. So uh, still using the same state one, um, we check it initially when the, the currently available zero one one, and then when those are the available resources, only process zeros needs can be met from that, right? But if we have more resources, if the currently available is three two two, so go back up here and look at the needs um, for for three two two. So for three two two. Uh, process zeros needs to be met because uh, its needs are less than uh, 322 for all of the resources as well as process one and process two but the only process whose needs can't be met when the um, available is 322 is process three because it needs four and it's only got we've only got three of resource zero right um, um, oh and no I was wrong so both process two and three according to my tests should needs can't be met with for three two two so not only that but oh yeah so for for three two two also uh, process resource zeros needs could be met for process two um because it needs one and we say there's three available but um oh and and um and also resource one we need zero uh, and there's two of those so that's fine but resource two, uh, we need three, and there's only two of those. So that's why process two uh, fails as well, right? Again, if, if you look through these, so. And you should, you should, you know, uh, people that are watching this um, help session after the fact um, or with me here, you know, you should try and make sure that you understand what these tests are actually doing and say, I mean, that'll help you to, to write, you know, to finish the assignment and, and then, you know, write the, the next functions and things, so. Um, but yeah, anyway, that, so that's needs are met. So let's go back to the assignment description here. I'm gonna have to wrap up here in a bit, but um, so I won't, I won't write any more code here, but your next step after that is to then implement the fine candidate process. So let's just describe what it does. Um, uh, you're gonna be reusing the needs are met function in here. So again, fine candidate process um, is another member function of the state class. Um, probably it occur if, if we look in here, yeah, it's right after. So find candidate process um, takes an array of, of booleans, um, boolean flags, one for each process. Um, so for each process that's not yet completed, uh, the, 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 the should be false in here. And for each process that is completed, it should be true. And so this also implies that this array should be the same size as the number of processes, right? So if we've got four processes, then completed should be an array of booleans of size four here um, with false or true for each process. Um, and again, we have currently available, which you know we've already seen here. So that's, that's the same as what we just had before. That's what number of, of the number of each race resource is currently available. And again, so if we have three resources, this should be an array of three integers in this case, right? And what we want to do is return the index of the process ID of a candidate. Um, so a process is a candidate if it's not yet completed. So it has to have, so two things have to be true. So we have to check every process. Um, and if, if the process isn't completed yet and if its need, needs can be met. So, so, um, so here's where you reuse the needs are met. 
So if it's not completed, um, and at that point, um, if its needs are met by the currently available, then it's a candidate and you want to return um, that process, okay? So hopefully that makes, that makes sense from this description here. Um, so basically, again, this, none of these functions, if, if you understand what they do, are gonna really be that big. Um, so this one you just need also should be just a single loop but this time you need to loop over the processes instead of looping over the uh, resources. But yeah, when you loop over the processes, you want to check if the process is completed and, and or if it's not completed. And if it's not completed, um, check whether its needs are met. Um, and if both of those are true, not completed and its needs are met, then you return that process that you just found, okay? Um, so yeah, if we look through the, the tests here for the find candidate process. Um, so again, so we're passing in, you know, currently available. So again, notice we're, we're using, still using state one for most all these tests that, that I gave you for this assignment. So, so you know, we're, we're all using this information to, to, to create these unit tests. So we start with the same kind of currently available, but we also have to have an array of Booleans for completed that we pass in as the first parameter. So if none of the processes are completed, so we already know if currently available is 0, 1, 1, um, and if all the processes are not completed, so completed is false for all these. If we call find candidate process, um, it should return process one, right? Because we, we know none of them are completed, and when currently available 011, one, one, um, only process one's needs are met. So that should be the process um, that gets returned as a candidate process, right? Um, likewise, oh, and, and you know, so to continue on for that, so th this is building up to how you're gonna be using these functions to implement the full banker's algorithm, right? So if, if we return this process, um, process one, we would, we would simulate it being completed. So we would set it to be true for completed. So here we, we change completed for process one to, from false to be true. So now if you call find candidate process, um, it should return no candidate in that case because the only process whose needs could be met with those was process one, but it's already completed. So no other process is a candidate now, right? So you get a no candidate return in that case. Um, yeah, and so on. So again, you should, you should kind of make certain you understand these tests here. So, um, so for our second set of tests, we use currently available of six, two, three, um, which well, I guess was different, so we didn't do that before. So, but anyway, you can kind of step through those. So. Um, okay, and then release the, the the third task you have to do for this assignment is implement the release allocate release allocated resources. So here, given a process. Um, and, and an array of the currently available, what you want to do for um, release allocated resources is um, all of the, the resources that a process, so, so if I say that uh, I want to release the allocated resources for, for process one, okay? So process one here, um, is, is what is for the first time that we call release allocate right resources in our test is going to be, you know, we're going to release the resources that are currently allocated to process one back to these currently available. Okay. So the resources that were um, allocated uh, for process one were this one, six, one, and two. Right. So after I call release allocated resources on this first test, um, I should have the result that, um, um, you know, adding six, one, and two to, to zero, one, and one. So I should have six, um, six, two, three, right? And so that's what it's saying here is, is that, 
um, um, by calling this, uh, we're going to just be adding the um, current allocations to this current to this available. So, so basically, we're releasing those resources and and giving those back to the system so that they're not currently available, right? Um, so, you know, to implement that, you basically have to have a loop that again goes over all the resources. But you need to um, basically add the allocations, the, the allocated resources for whichever process you're told uh, back into the currently available, right? So that would, that would, um, that, that by adding those back in, that, that would release the process, these resources back to the system, basically. Or anyway, back to this current current available vector that we're using for our um, banker's algorithm here. So, um, all right, and then for the, I think the the final thing that you do, yeah, is implement is safe. Maybe, um, yeah, there's there's some some things. Maybe maybe next Monday we can talk about some of the system tests. Um, but um, to implement is safe, let me look at the, the function, the, the signature function here for is safe here. So is safe is uh, actually above the others for some reason. I don't know why I didn't put it before, but it, it was before the needs are met and, and the other two functions here. So yeah, I mean, you basically have to do these, um, these steps. So, so basically, you have to make a copy of the resources available. So remember, there, there's a resources available, um, which when you load the system state, you know, like, like the needs, also resources available gets initialized for you as well when you when you load a state for a, for, for a simulation, right? So, so this corresponds to you know our textbooks algorithm for the 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 you know the is safe. Right, so, so we start by making a copy of that. Um, and, and, you know, by the way, there's already, I mean, you could do that by hand, but there is a function called copy vector. So you can just use that. Um, if you look through here. Let's see, where's copy vector? Uh, I'm sure it's in there somewhere. So, so copy vector though should, um, um, you know, is a member function. So it takes a source and destination vector. Um, so you can reuse that. Um, I probably won't take anything off if you want to implement that by hand. Um, um, either way. So, um, So yeah, you, you start by that. So, so that will be your available resources. And then from your, once you have your available resources, uh, in order to check if the state is safe or not, we have to um, create an array of Booleans for all the processes that are all marked as false. So that's, you know, that's, that's the same as the, um, It's the same as this completed uh, array of Booleans here that we talked about, right? So, so you, you create that um, and mark, start those as all the processes as being marked off as false. Um, and then you have a loop here where you search for a candidate process. Um, um, and here you'll want to be reusing, you want to reuse the find candidate process. Um, and, and then if you find such a candidate process, you want to release its allocated resources and mark it as being completed. So you want to mark its uh, list, you know, you, you want to mark this um, uh, completed to be true. And, and you want to call the, the um, return um, 
or release allocated resources, right? And you want to keep doing that. Um, so I probably described this in more detail in the assignment description, but basically on this loop, uh, you keep doing this as long as, you know, what you call, you call find candidate process, um, and if it returns an actual process instead of no candidate, you do these two steps of marking it and releasing its resources. And, but as soon as you call find candidate process and it returns no candidate, then you jump out of the loop and you have to then have a final test. Um, and basically, the system, the, the state is safe if all the processes got marked, right? So if all of those um, are, are now true, where they initially started out as being false, as being run or marked, um, if they're all true, then the state is safe and you want to return true. But if one or more of them are not marked after you get done with the sloop, then the answer is false. The, the, the state is not safe. Um, All right, so yeah, I mean, the is safe function uh, will be the, have the most code in there, but you you're mostly should be reusing all the functions here. Uh, so, so you have to reuse all the functions that you write. Um, find candidate process, release uh, allocated resources, and um, 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 the, 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 um, needs are met um, and, and you know you can also reuse the copy vector that was actually given for you as well um, in here so. all right um yeah so i think i'm gonna stop that video or, or stop the session here um and so as usual i'll um, post this video um, up on our um youtube uh, playlist for the class um so if, if, he, if anybody has a question here last minute question let me know um, and while I'm wrapping things up here, so let me go ahead and stop the video then.